How freaking terrible is it that banks can charge us for not having money in our accounts? If you've never been hit with an overdraft fee, count yourself lucky. You don't know the pain. But if you have, you'll know how frustrating it is to find out the banks are quite happy to just add on extra fees and charges on top of your already incredibly low or non-existent balance. Today, I'm going to talk about these terrible charges called overdraft fees. If there's anything I've learned from researching this video, it's that overdraft fees are confusing AF. But I'm gonna do my best and let you know everything that I've found. The types of overdraft fees that you might face, the mystery of overdraft protection and whether you should actually get it. Banks are constantly trying to sell you this. And most importantly, what to do to avoid the whole overdraft thing altogether. Welcome to the Ready Set Life YouTube channel. My name is Brittany and I'm a millennial financial coach who makes videos all about taking the fear out of finance. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoy this video and subscribe if you haven't already. New videos come out every single Thursday and you don't wanna miss them. There are tons of fees and charges to talk about when it comes to banks, but one of the most frustrating fees is the overdraft fee. <laughs> It's a fee that not a lot of people find out about until they're actually hit with one. For me, I was hit a lot. In my high school days, I used to get hit with an overdraft fee like every week. Terrible, I know, but I used to be super disorganized with my finances, but it happens to a lot of people. As I mentioned, a lot of people don't even know that this fee exists until it happens to them. So what do you need to know when it comes to overdraft fees? First, let's explain what overdraft actually means. Overdrafting is when you try and take out more money than you have in your account. You can overdraw by swiping or tapping a debit card for an amount that's larger than the balance of your account, writing a check with an amount that's larger than what's in your account, trying to withdraw more cash than you have in your account at an ATM, or having a pre-scheduled automatic payment try and go through that's larger than the amount that's in your account. Basically, anything that you try and do in your account, if you don't have enough of a balance to do it, you'll be in overdraft. When this goes down, two things can happen. You either get an NSF fee, a non-sufficient funds fee, or you get hit with an overdraft fee. If you don't have overdraft protection, your card and payment will be rejected and you'll get an NSF fee. In Canada, the average NSF fee is about $45 and in the States, it can range anywhere from 27 to 35. Yep, that means if you swipe your debit card for say a $5 coffee, but only have $2.50 in your account, it can turn into a $50 coffee. What's worse is that the banks can charge this multiple times a day. So if you swipe that card and then also had a couple automatic payments could try and go through that you forgot about, you could be charged upwards of $150 in extra fees. Usually banks set a daily limit on charges like this, but from what I've researched, that limit is almost always over $100 a day. And on top of this, if you don't notice within the first day, it could be two or $300 by the time you actually notice that it's happening in your account. So. How do you avoid charges like this? That's where overdraft protection comes in. Now, I have to give a little bit of a warning here. I'm a bit biased on this. When I was overdrafting my account, of course the bank teller convinced me that I needed overdraft protection and I paid for the useless fee for a long time. I didn't really understand what it was when she was trying to sell it to me. So I said, okay, fine, trusting that she had my best interests at heart, but it, ended up being a fee that I never used after that. When I finally realized what it was, I canceled it. But as soon as I did, each time I went into the bank, I was given that whole overdraft speech because they must have seen on my file that I had opted in before. There was also a time for a while where I was paying that overdraft protection fee without my opt-in consent. It was a whole thing with TD, I'll link an article down below. So yeah, overdraft protection is a little bit of a touchy subject for me. <laughs> but I'm gonna do my best to explain it as open and non-judging as possible because I believe that we all have the responsibility and right to make the financial decisions that best fit with our lives regardless of what everyone else thinks. So what exactly is overdraft protection? When you have overdraft protection, those charges that you make when you don't have enough funds actually get accepted, making your account negative. You still get a charge, but it's usually lower than what you'd pay with an NSF fee. Banks do this in a few different ways. Sometimes it's a monthly fee called an overdraft protection charge, and that's added regardless of if you overdraft in that month or not. That's the type of fee that I was being charged while banking at TD. 
Other times it's a charge called an overdraft charge and that's added every time that you overdraft your account. So you could be paying it multiple times a day or multiple times a month and it would just be cheaper than an NSF fee. But depending on how many times that you overdrafted your account, it could end up more expensive than an NSF fee. In these cases, you'd be paying back the amount that you borrowed as well as the fees added and sometimes additional interest fees, depending on how long it takes you to pay back their balance. Another option that's sometimes available is overdraft protection by linking accounts. If you overdraft in your checking account, linking the accounts would actually allow the bank to take from a different designated account for the money, which can be either checking or savings, or sometimes it can even attach to a credit card or a line of credit. Of course, if there isn't enough money in those accounts either, then you're still borrowing from the bank. And there are, of course, fees every time that the bank makes those transfers for you. But sometimes this option is better for saving on those interest fees. So how do you know if overdraft protection is the right option for you? If you find yourself overdrafting on a regular basis and you're paying a crap ton of NSF fees, getting overdraft protection is better than nothing. If it's between NSF fees or overdraft protection, then yeah, overdraft protection is cheaper. But my personal stance, as well as my professional opinion as a financial coach, is that you shouldn't be paying any of those fees. You should never be overdrafting in the first place. I know, time for some tough love here, but come on, just save yourself the headache and stress. Here are a few ways to avoid overdrafting your account. The first is low balance notifications. Every bank I know has a free service that you can opt into to let you know if you have a low balance on your account. Sometimes it's an email or if the bank has an app, they can let you know by push notification on your phone. Just Google your bank to find out or contact them to ask. That way you'll always know when your account goes below a certain amount. The second way to avoid overdraft fee is check-ins. No, you don't need to check your bank account every single day. There are two ways to do this. If you're into daily check-ins, then by all means, go for it and that will totally help. But I also don't wanna force you to obsessively think about your accounts all the time. A check-in with your accounts once a week or a few times a week will at least give you an idea of where you're at with everything. If during your check, you see a lower than normal balance, then you'll know to slow down your purchasing and check more often to make sure that you're not overdrafting. As I mentioned, banks can charge these fees multiple times a day. So even one day of overdrafting can make a huge dent in your accounts. The third way to avoid overdraft fees is tracking your auto payments. Knowing exactly what auto payments are coming out and when they're coming out is essential to actually staying on top of overdraft. The top reason that people get into overdraft in the first place isn't because they don't know the balance of their accounts. It's that they're not tracking all the money coming in and out of those accounts. It's super easy to think you have enough balance to make a purchase, but then forget about the other things that you bought that day, the auto payments that you scheduled three weeks ago, or those little $2 ATM fees that add up so quickly. I'm gonna link my video on being responsible with your money up in the cards. This will really help you understand how to actually plan for these expenses and how to track them. And one last tip, don't be afraid to ask your bank for a refund for these charges. Often they will, especially for a first offense, banks are usually willing to work with you on reimbursing fees like this. It never hurts to ask. Thanks for watching today's video. Let me know in the comments down below, have you ever been hit with a mystery fee in your bank account? And did you ask the bank to reimburse it? If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel because next week I'm going to be pulling back the curtain on the financial world, demystifying even more confusing financial jargon. See you next Thursday.